All right, YouTube, so first fish on, and it looks like a pretty decent one. Remember when you're dead sticking, the bite is light. It's almost like a crappy thump. It wasn't a big hit like a striper. It wasn't bending the pole when it first hit, but once I set the hook, you can see it's got a pretty good bend in the pole. So, put a lot of pressure on the fish. There we go. First fish of the day, first striper dead sticking. All right, YouTube, so there you go, hold it up. You can see, this is what happens when you dead stick. Text level, water striper. we're going to be doing something a little bit different we're actually going to be going up here to Newberry Creek in Oklahoma and we're going to be dead sticking for a striped bass and basically when you dead stick you hold your rod perfectly still to imitate a shad that's been stunned by the cold and just wait for a striper to come up and take an easy meal and hit your bait they actually hit very light like a crappie but instead of a small crappie you'll end up with a 5 10 15 pound striped bass the way you dead stick is basically you look for these, these flats like you see here. And what you want to do is you want to drift along the flats until you get to the edges where the water gets a little bit deeper. And that's where the striper are going to be sitting. They're going to be waiting there trying to feed on the, the stun shad. And it uh, makes for a very exciting trip. Today I'm going to be fishing with Brad from Circle B Guide Service as well as Jerry from Jerry's Guide Service. So stay tuned and watch the Pulling action. up to this first spot, Brad. What are you looking for on the graph? There's bait here. Uh -huh. A few fish under them. Okay. Birds working around here just a little bit. Right. A little bit of a, a change of water a depth there. Uh huh. And we're going to drift, so you know, away from it, and turn the thumper on, and and they should come under the boat here. Okay. Awesome. Alright, you too. So we just turned on the thumper at 7:49. Not so too many fish. You can see a few fish here underneath the bait. We'll come back and check a few minutes later and see what it looks like. All right, you do. So we've been at a couple more minutes, and you can start to see some bigger marks showing up. So those longer red marks are fish. So you can see they're starting to come in and respond to the thumper. So hopefully we can get them stacked underneath the boat and get them to bite. All right, so basically the setup that we're doing, this is we're drifting this way. So we've got a uh, live bait on three poles, and then we're all holding dead sticks as well. You're just looking for a real faint tap with the dead stick. Uh, they're there, but they're not biting, you know. I have a pan of optics on my boat, and it's pretty funny sometimes. You'll see exactly what they do. You know, they'll come up, they'll look at your bait, and then they'll swim away. I've had cases, even with a live shad, I'll have five or six stripers looking around it, surrounding it, not biting it. You got a live scope on here? Yeah. It's like fishing in an aquarium. I mean, you can see exactly what the fish are doing. So it's not only about knowing that they're there, it's about you know, being able to tell exactly what they're up to. Yeah. Well, some of the key things I tell people when they use the thumpers, you know, turn it on, wait 10 minutes, and then if you don't get a bite, go someplace else. Because it'll bring the fish in, but it won't make them bite. Nothing does. My buddy uses his trolling motor if it's not like fast enough, if there's not enough wind, he'll turn his trolling motor on and use it to make fake wind. Alright you two, so this is spot number two and you can see clearly you got bait and then you got big fish underneath the bait feeding on them. You can see the separation between the bait and the fish. So that tells you they're pretty active and aggressive. You're in 30 feet of water, so you just do a nice, uh, you don't have to go super fast on the thumper. As you can see, there's plenty of fish down there underneath this bait. Seems like the thumper works a little better when you go back to them. So this is uh, spot number three. This is a little bit different scenario. You don't see a lot of bait. You can see we're in deeper water and the fish are hanging, uh, I don't know, it's like 
30 to 45 feet off the bottom you see a lot of fish showing up down here so because there's no bait a lot of times that'll actually get you more bites simply because they have less uh, things to choose from to eat so we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot the fish are a little bit deeper they're probably about 48 feet of water so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to 15 pulls if you remember some of the videos i showed you so this is basically two feet one pull two three 15 right there so it should be right in the middle where the fish are beating so we're gonna go ahead and drop it right there and just hold on see if we get any bites the second fish of the day this one's a little live shaft so this is our second spot the fish are a little bit uh they're just really stacking up with the ground i'll get a picture of the ground for a quick so a little nice box fish go go tap, 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 pull. yep look at the size of the bait they're eating right now too ago I wasn't getting any bites on bait that big now that's what they want so just gonna remember conditions are always going to change out here on Lake Texas. This is what the graph looks like now you can see this is on zoom this is on regular these are all fish we just put that first box fish in the boat but you can see the graph stack pretty good so the fish are coming in they're starting to get active hopefully we can catch a few more. Nice. Good quality fish. That's awesome. Another fish on the shad here. It's not windy enough yet for dead sticking, so we're hoping the wind's gonna pick up a little bit later. But in the meantime, we're gonna keep catching fish. Nice little box. What's the logistics of the thumper? So when I was, I was at Cabela's one time, I got the Cabela's next to my house, and I was watching feed the fish. This is, they just dump a bunch of live fish in there and you watch those big predator fish and they just sit there and they just make this lunge it's like boom and they grab the fish boom they grab the fish so think about it, you got a whole group of fish just like making these lunges they're pushing all that vibrations in the water you know the splasher is mimicking fish jumping out of the water yeah. this is mimicking fish feeding under the water just lunging after that bait fish so if you can imagine a school of what we probably had 20 30 40 100 striper underneath you all hitting a school of shad, all making those vibrations, put the shad trying to get away. Putting all those vibrations in the water, and that's, that to me is how it, what triggers it, and that's what gets the thumper to work. What got me sold on the thumper is uh, Josh had his, and he was having trouble, and I got my fish that day, and I had my customers, and I called him, and I said, hey man, come over here where I'm at, catching them. He pulled up about 60, 80 yards from me, turned his thumper on. I mean, I lights out on my screen and he turned his thumper on and boom fish left it's all they left when he was catching them so i pulled off of him went and found another school a little bit better fish we was having a throw back we had ours and i called him again i said hey there's a better fish he come up to me about 80 yards again 10 minutes boom no fish for me and they was all over there got back to the dock said we gotta have one of them <laughs> Is that about the right speed you think on a depth, depth of water? How deep are we? 42. It should be, but you know, again, if you're not getting a bite, just change the tempo a little bit. The fish are here, but you can always raise it up a little bit. I just wouldn't go too crazy with it. Like get faster or slower? Just a little bit faster, just a tiny bit. Nothing huge. Looks like you can see there's a ton of fish stacked up. You get bites on a dead stick and on a live bait. Just hooks one up. That was a dead stick, wasn't it? Nice. Oh, nice fish. A little bit better fish. On a dead stick. On a chartreuse. down on a dead stick and we hooked on a dead stick. So you how effective a dead stick can be. There we go on the chartreuse. A 
don't know bear bear nice nice fish chartreuse dead stick again chartreuse might be the killer these how subtle these hits are sometimes sometimes they're like massive hits and other times just barely a tap Something. a little bit yeah it's like crappie fishing Nice fish. Just hit that one. Oh yeah, there we go. Good one. Dead stick again. That's way good. Yeah, I think so. It looks like a little decent fish. Got one on over here. Got one. Finally. <laughs> Told you I felt like big sand bass. That's a big sand bass. Yeah, that is Check a big sand bass. Got off. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's a box. Good box. I got some of my tackle box that had the eye uh, underneath it, so you can like put the top one on and put the bottom one on. Yeah, it has, a, it has two eyes, one at the top, one at the bottom. So you just tie a second jig on. Yeah, they're fat now. Yeah, a little tap. Tap. Yeah, there's some fat fish this year. They're going to be healthy next year. I'm telling you, whenever they get over here and really, because what we're, what this is is in between bite, really. Uh -huh. It's in between that good cold weather bite and the fall bite. Uh -huh. And when it gets a good cold weather bite and these fish can stay up here and eat like they are, you're going to catch some 25, 6 inch fish that weigh 15 pounds. Yeah. Man, I like to use a little heavier uh, head than most people. Uh -huh. like, I like the two ounce head. 
Okay. And you know whatever color of flute you desire, and just you know the way I do it is I kind of just do it real slow, you know, just give it kind of a slow approach, because uh -huh. this time of year coming in the colder months and you know, fish are really feeding on that lesser action bait, lesser, you know, not as aggressive as a strike as some of them, maybe your faster baits. You just want to kind of a slow approach. They want the slow approach because of colder water. Uh -huh. Any uh, any other recommendations for people that are coming here trying to fish take some in the wintertime? Man, if you come up here to fish and take some in the wintertime, just, um, you know, well, I tell everybody to look at the weather ahead of time because this lake can get nasty. It's big, you know, big with the wind. But other than that, just try to find you a school of fish and stay consistent on them, and they're not going to bite like it's springtime. So you're going to have to hang with them a little bit longer than you would any other time. Yeah, I noticed that it took us a little while. You know, even if we were seeing fish right away, sometimes it took a little while to really get them fired up and get them biting. But uh, all in all, man, it was, a, it was an awesome trip. We caught some of the biggest sand bass I think I've ever seen today, in addition to the striper that we shared our bite. So that was a, a fantastic trip. I really appreciate you, you know, letting me come out here with you. And uh, I heard you mentioned something about noodling, so we'll have to do a, a noodling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, just noodling, and I'll tell you that, that thumper that you built, well, it's changed the game. and been a couple of game changers and striper fishing the pilot trolling motor and the splasher now it's going to be the thumper so oh man i appreciate that i know people have been doing it for years banging a stick against the boat but uh that gets old it's really hard to do if you got a boat full of clients you're trying to keep fishing so that's awesome yes uh, sir tell me a little bit about yourself like how long have you been a guy here at lake tacoma uh, i guess that, uh, this will be going in my third season um, i grew up with a passion for fishing me and my father uh, we used to come down to this lake all the time. My grandparents lived down here. So, uh, you know, I live so close to the lake, why not fish for a living? <laughs> no doubt, man. That's really cool. And, uh, you know, today we were doing some dead, thinking it's a bait fish. I think we were probably 50 50. We caught about half the fish on bait, half the fish on dead thicket. But what kind of tips could you give for people that are getting into dead thicket for the first time? Well, uh, patience. Um, it, it's, it's still a little early. Um, it, it's why they call it fishing, not catching. Um, some days, some days you go out there and you destroy them. Uh, other days, all of a sudden they don't bite, and there hasn't been a big front or a big temperature change. Um, you know that's, you know why the splashers and the thumpers. Uh, you know you have to be able to constantly change the environment a little bit. The fish are different constantly. I mean different times of day it seemed like they liked that thumper hitting a little harder then different group of fish seemed like they liked it a little quieter um, so you know it's nice to be able to make those adjustments you know as needed um, instead of just flying blind now you've got a little bit more control out there yeah it was I noticed we did that today a little bit sometimes if we were shallow we were turning the thumper way down if we were a little bit deeper we were turning a little bit higher and uh, I remember that one spot we hit, it was real shallow. We had to pump up a little bit too high, and all of a sudden the fish scattered. And then we turned it back down, and they all started coming back. So, a really good point about how the fishing conditions change. And they're really, yeah, really great to come out here and fish with you. Really enjoyed the trip. Definitely want to tell uh, some of my subscribers about you. And uh, if you can 